Welcome to the state television company Western Armenia. Broadcast for today. Baku shows in action related to determining the fate of missing Armenian soldiers. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Armenia. Since 2020, Azerbaijanis have destroyed more than 570 Armenian historical and cultural samples. The sons of Western Armenia, Kirk Kerkorian. Gophers are in danger of extinction in Western Armenia. On the 33rd anniversary of the declaration of the Republic of Artsakh on September 2, it should be celebrated in a new way. Vahe Hovanisyan. Artsakh is indicated on the 19th century map in the National Museum of Tatarstan. The President of the House of Representatives of Uruguay, Ana Oliveira, and the Vice President of the House of Representatives, Pedro Hizdoyan, visited the Genocide Memorial in Armenia. Baku authorities show in action in determining the fate of missing Armenian soldiers. According to Sputnik Armenia, Haik Sarkisyan, head of the Department of Humanitarian Affairs of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Eastern Armenia, announced this in Vanadzor on the eve of the International Day of Disappeared. Eastern Armenia is taking all possible steps to present the problem to international bodies and courts, also taking into account the fact that under certain circumstances, enforced disappearance may be considered as a crime against humanity. Together with international partners, we continue to take steps to clarify the fate of these missing citizens. The Armenian state has never politicized. Humanitarian cooperation is always open to work with all interested parties. I'd like to assure you that the operation will not stop until the fate of all the missing citizens is clarified. The spokesperson of foreign ministry said, Western Armenia is also demanding that Baku take concrete steps to determine the fate of the missing Armenian soldiers. Western Armenia is ready to support this process and continues to work with international partners in an effort to clarify and to seek justice for missing soldiers. Artur Gevorkian, founding director of the National Sculpture Park Museum and head of the NGO, defender of the cultural heritage of the Armenian highlands, told Sputnik Armenia as follows, that the destruction of the Armenian historical and cultural heritage in the settlements of Nakhichevan, Ganzak and Artsakh began in the 1960s during the period of SSR Azerbaijan. In the year of the 2020 war, Azerbaijani soldiers filmed their vandalism by smartphones and posted it on the internet. But the authorities in Baku, when they realized the danger of violating international law, prohibited the distribution of these materials. Despite this, it is now possible to monitor the situation through space imaging. According to Gevorkian, during the war 44 day in 2020, and before that more than 250 Armenian historical and cultural monuments were destroyed in Artsakh, in, in neighboring regions, and mostly monuments of the victims of the Great Patriotic War. Since 2020, more than 570 samples of Armenian heritage have been damaged. Gevorkian calls to collect these facts and present them to international courts so that the international community is informed and pressure is initiated. One of the sons of Western Armenia is Kirk Kerkorian, who was born in 1917 in the city of Fresno, California, in a family of immigrants who survived the genocide against the Armenians. The city of Las Vegas, as it is, was created by Kirk Kerkorian. At one point, he was the 41st richest person in the world. Despite his extensive philanthropy around the world, he has constantly avoided the limelight, refused awards, and never agreed to have any of his donations named after him. Kerkorian is one of the largest hotel builders in the world. He is credited with developing Las Vegas and bringing its casinos and hotels to their current status. After all, he was the founder of many of them. He is the former owner of the Metro Goldin Mayer Film Studio. Being a skilled investor, he also got involved in the automobile industry and became the shareholder of a significant part of Ford and Chrysler companies. At one time, he was the richest person in Los Angeles and he was on the list of the world's richest pe people. Known as an ardent philanthropist, he recently donated $100 million to the California State University, Los Angeles, for the creation of the Dream Foundation and other educational programs. Kerkorian died in Beverly Hills on 15 June 2015, nine days after his 98th birthday. Buried in uh, Inglewood Park Cemetery, Los Angeles. 
The golfers of Western Armenia were included in the red list. Their numbers are rapidly decreasing due to growing civilization and lack of food resources. Golfers are moving quickly in groups near grasses, fields and reservoirs, especially in the early morning and evening hours, are included in the red list by the international environmental organizations. This list includes animals whose species may be endangered in the near future. Unfortunately, today, the Turkish government that occupied Western Armenia does not take any measures for the preservation of these animal species in the territory of Western Armenia. The government continues to completely destroy the nature of Western Armenia and does not provide a solution to the environmental problems. Construction activity in Turkish cities and chemical emissions from large factories that pollute the air for the damage the environment, leading to a rapid decline in nature and biodiversity. This behavior threatens not only the existence of gophers, but also endangers the entire nature and causes its negative effects on the biodiversity system. Vahe Hovanisan, a member of the Alternative Project Group, suggests celebrating the 33rd anniversary of the Declaration of the Republic of Artsakh on 2 September in a new way. According to him, the issue of Artsakh should be sharply included in the political agenda for me, and without it, we cannot have respectable negotiations. Hovanisan emphasized that there should be future plans and concrete steps that will help to make the national dream a reality. He criticizes the current authorities and demands that Armenia return to discussing the Artsakh issue within the framework of international conjecture and vital interests. He also emphasizes that we cannot have real happiness when our compatriots are in prison in Baku and our people are in a difficult situation. Artsakh is marked on the map of Khazar Khanganate of the 9th century. The National Museum of Tatarstan in Kazan presents the state of Great Hike and keeps a unique medieval map on which Artsakh, Parisos, Utik province and Tashir are marked. The Khazar Khaganate was an early feudal state that existed from the middle of the 7th to the 10th century in the North Caucasus, in the lower reaches of the Volga and Don. The Khaganate was an alliance of Turkish-speaking, foreign-speaking and Iranian-speaking peoples who professed predominantly Judaism. The capital of Khazaria was the city of Semander on the territory of modern Dagestan, then Itil, located at the mouth of the Volga. On 29 August, Anna Oliveira, the Speaker of the Uruguayan House of Representatives, and Pedro Gisdonia, Vice President of the House of Representatives, visited the Genocide Memorial in Armenia. Tarkis Khandanyan, Chairman of the Standing Committee on Foreign Relations of the National Assembly of Eastern Armenia, and Madame Gevorkian, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the Republic of Armenia to the Eastern Armenia of Uruguay, accompanied the delegation. The guests were welcomed by the Deputy Director of the Museum Institute of the Genocide, Lucine Abrahamian. She accompanied the guests to the Genocide Memorial in Armenia, introducing the history of the memorial. The Deputy Director also attached upon the three cross stones erected in memory of the Armenian killed in the massacres organized by the Azerbaijani government in the cities of Sumgait, Kirovabad, Baku, at the end of the last century, on the territory of Tizerna Gabert, and the history of five freedom fighters buried in front of Hushapat during the Artsakh War. Ms. Anna Oliveira led a ref at the memorial to the victims of the genocide, then the guests placed flowers near the eternal fire and observed the minute of silence in memory of the innocent victims of the genocide committed against Armenians. The members of the delegation also visited the Museum of the Genocide Against Armenians, got acquainted with the permanent and temporary exhibitions, and then made notes in the Memorial Book of Honored Guests. Expressing gratitude for the list, Lucine Abrahamian, the deputy director of the museum, presented Ms. Anna Oliveira the books about the genocide against the Armenians. In turn, the president of the House of Representatives of Uruguay also presented a book to the Museum of Genocide Against Armenians. This was all for today. I wish you a good weekend. Goodbye.